You're listening to Tech Forward. I'm your host, Cheryl Chotrani. I'm a tech founder, developer, investor, and an industry enthusiast. And I believe that diversity can transform businesses and improve the world we live in. The Tech Forward podcast is a place for tech entrepreneurs, executives, venture capitalists, and diversity champions to share their stories, insights, and visions of the future. Together, we'll discuss the path to improving representation for women, minorities, and other underrepresented groups. What challenges, strategies, and possible solutions will shape the road ahead? Let's find out together. I am so delighted to bring to you today's episode of Tech Forward. Martha Hernandez, founder and CEO of Made Boss, is our guest today. Made Boss is an AI driven career pathing platform that helps create economic mobility for entry level workers in retail. Before launching Made Boss, Martha had a long career as a career consultant and talent management leader at organizations such as Coral, Give Something Back, Mi Pueblo Food Centers. Inner City Advisors Talent Management Initiative, and most recently, she was Save Mart Supermarkets Director of Talent Acquisition. In this episode, we'll be talking about the barriers that Latina and other women of color entrepreneurs face in getting access to funding and other support for their businesses. She'll also be sharing with us her story of how she launched Me Boss, the challenges that she's faced, and how she overcame them, including some of her own doubts and fears. I'm sure that you will be as inspired by her story as I am. So let's get right into the interview. So hi, Martha. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. Thank you. I'm excited. (laughs) Wonderful. Well, I thought we could start out by just having you tell us a little bit about you and, you know, what's been your journey as a career consultant and how did you come up with the idea for Made Boss? Thank you. Yeah. So it's been an interesting journey. Um, I think Nevertheless, super exciting. I love the life that I've chosen. I began really becoming interested in people development and leadership development after becoming a Coral Fellow. And that's when I understood that it was 12 of us and we all had very different backgrounds, very different education. We we had reached different education levels and we were doing Coral at very different points of our lives. But yet we were able to have a a very similar experience. Like all of us had impactful uh, journeys through Coral. And I realized that, you know, no matter where you come from or where you're at in your career or life, that if you go through some sort of um, development or experience that essentially is combined and that is shared and that is personalized in some way, that we all have the opportunity to develop. And that always sort of stayed with me. And as I joined organizations in HR and particularly um, leadership in talent acquisition and talent management, that I saw the same, uh, sort of the same model be presented for, you know, from people that were in janitorial roles and all the way to vice president roles. So I, that's like the first time that I felt like, oh, this makes me feel good as a person, <laughs> like mm-hmm. seeing people developing and starting in, in one place and like seeing their growth into roles that they could be more influential and make more money and feel as if they've uh, accomplished something like that gave me a very like a personal satisfaction. And I wanted more of that. That That's sort of like how I began this journey. and. Um, Made Boss was simply a a way for me to replicate that feeling and be able to um, implement it globally. One thing that I did one on one, you know, I figured that I could go and and do it one on one, and then I could go and do it for different organizations and see the change enterprise wide. And then I'm like, oh, what if like we could replicate this not just within one organization? What if like we could do it? in an industry. And so now we're in, a pro- in the process of, of really getting our first clients and seeing the Made Boss methodology be implemented in a very global and um, well, first national and then global way. 
Wonderful. Well, it's it's so great that you were able to find something that you really connected with and were passionate about and that it's driven you to to launch this business. So first, can you tell us about the product? Like, how does the product work and, and what exactly does it do? So the product is something, you know, when I explain my boss, like most people don't know how to even picture it in their minds. But essentially, um, for the user, um, this is the employee, it's three curated career paths. So we do a, a basic questionnaire. And from that, we are able to drive three recommendations. So let's say for you, we say, hey, we have found that you're an incredible match for a career in advertising, a career in communications, and a career in public relations. And so you look at the description of the three and you decide to look into one. So let's say communications is the one that you look into. Immediately, we're able to show you what a career path in communications look like. Where you are at right now, let's say that you're a grocery clerk. We show you the very next step and five other steps that essentially take you to like the highest potential, the highest role within your company in that career path. Once you um, look into your path, we then show you immediate roles that take you to that very next step. So in this particular example, let's say you're, again, a career, uh, um, a grocery clerk. The very next step would be maybe a clerk in advertising or a clerk in, um, in communications. And so any next step that we show you take you directly into that big goal. Once you see that, you can either become interested, you can apply, or you can make that your plan. Mm. And what's really neat about our model is that not only do we give you an opportunity to make it a plan and engage you daily on that plan, but we also show you resources. So based on that questionnaire that you did, we know that you have a, I don't know, 70% match to this particular role, but you have some gaps. And in those gaps, let's say that data analytics is one of the ones that you need to work on. We show you that immediately and then say three to four resources, in this case, classes that within your company you can take or partners of your company you can take to be able to satisfy that. And so even though right now there are a lot of other resources that you can go into, you have to have an idea or some sort of inspiration to go in and like say, oh, I want to take this class. Um, But we figure out a way to actually gap that and inspire people that may not even know where they could be. And we show them an actual path and resources on how to get there. Okay. So, I mean, it sounds like you have a very ambitious goal and, and a very robust product. What were some of the first things you did to get started? How did you actually get the product developed? You know, it took a long time. I knew I wanted to develop Made Boss about three years ago. Like this is when I was like, imagine if there was a thing that you could just like have on your pocket and like tells you, you know, where you could be and it shows you a visual. Um, that was like, that, I, that it came in my mind like, oh my God, this would be a really cool thing. But I, I didn't have the resources. I'm a single mom, a homeowner, my parents live with me. I really didn't know, like, how to even start. And I started doing research, researching and I'm like, well, I'm going to apply the model in building an actual business. I'm going to apply the same methodology, the main bus model in this, in this career pathing. And so I started um, doing that. I, was, I looked at resources. I looked at like mm-hmm. what needs to be my very next step. And so my very next step was figure out who are other people that have actually done this and you know mm-hmm. how did they start and so i joined several organizations locally startup alliances the latino startup alliance i even applied to like very early accelerators like programs that would give me an overview of what it meant to be an entrepreneur specifically in tech and also just start learning the landscape in silicon valley going to events meeting people and that was really the very first step is identifying sort of my community landscape and the resources around me so that I, I could start asking questions on how to do this thing. Okay. And did you have technical skills? Like, could you actually physically build the product or did you outsource that no, or find someone so else I, to do that? Yeah. Well, yes and no. I, I, I'm not a coder per se, like not a mm-hmm. software engineer, but um, 
in line with, you know, preparing when I thought about this idea three years ago, I was running recruiting, but I never, I had no um, experience with systems. And so that's the very first thing I did is uh, modify my background and started looking for for jobs um, in talent acquisition where I could actually have systems experience. Mm. Um, and so the last three years, I actually spent them um, integrating and implementing actual recruiting and talent management systems. And throughout those three years, I, I think I had uh, about 10 uh, implementations and about almost 18 integrations. And so that gave me background to be the one leading teams, identifying gaps within organizations and deploying you know, such tools, um, but also um, being the one purchasing the product. So that was like the sort of epiphany in, in really understanding what you know someone um, either that invests in me or that joins my team was going to look for. It's like, have we done this before? And so, yes, I have technical background in the sense that I've uh, been able to implement something like Mayboss in large organizations. Okay, so it sounds like, I mean, you've had a really long journey to get to where you are now. And, you know, you were very strategic about getting the experiences, getting the learning that you needed to, to build this business. So that's wonderful. Yeah. And then, you know, that's sort of like how we need to drive our careers that, you know, things don't happen from one day to the next. And sometimes people just feel stuck. They, they see it really, really big, like the opportunity is so big that um, it becomes uh, overwhelming and, and we quit. We quit even on the thought that we could do something. Um, but, you know, I want to go back to how did I start? I didn't have technical background. And so what I did, I started drawing. So on index cards, I started drawing, like drawing what the app would look like. And I got to like almost 52 different cards on every single action. And I think that really gave me perspective on what I was building and like get really excited about it and pretend like if I click here, like where would that take me? Uh, to this day, like I have those cards um, actually uploaded and some, from time to time I go back and I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, it's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. But that's really how it began. Well, one day you you should certainly frame those. I'm sure they will be a, a, a wonderful <laughs> memento of, of how things started. So I understand that now you have a co-founder who's working with you. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Also, and, that was an, a strategic move. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. From what I gather on your website, he has a, an amazing pedigree, an ex-Apple engineer and MIT graduate. So is, is he someone that you knew previously? And if not, how did you find him and bring him on board? So, you know, I want to start with with just sort of um, putting like all the cards on the table. The fact that I'm Latina, mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm female, I don't have the pedigree that typically um, VCs look for. Um, like I knew all of this coming in and, and that's, you know, primarily the reason why I was so strategic about how I built Made Boss and like who I brought um, to, you know, join me. But in line with with like knowing that also all of that plays a role in who you're able to attract to your organization. And I met with so many people with technical backgrounds and shared the Made Boss vision. And although I had um, like several in interested in joining, like I really didn't, I didn't find that passion and that fit because I already in my mind, like I had this person that I wanted to be a part of, of my boss and to join me. And that's um, Juventino. Mm -hmm. I actually met Juventino about five years ago. Uh, we were both in, in, in the music industry, passionate about mariachi. He had started a mariachi here in Oakland and I'm a singer. And so I sang at this event and literally like that day is when I found out that he had a software background. And immediately I told him about like this thing that one day I wanted to build. And so, you know, like most people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like great. Like, that's great. Everybody has an idea. And so at this point, I'm, I'm everybody, right? I'm everybody having an idea. Mm -hmm. So not really like a big deal. Then I was like, you know, the, the best way to like to prove uh, to him that this is real and that it could be an amazing tool for, for the world is to sort of test it and, and help and support him in his career growth. And so without like really being 
explicit about it. I was like, hey, you know, why are you doing like contract work and, you know, with this type of organizations, like, let's get you to like leadership and do something really neat and earn money and, you know, <laughs> and started working with him, um, checked his resume, supported him in that process. And like, he'll even tell you, you know, Marta really helped in blah, 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 navigating my career. But, and so like ending at Apple, right? Mm. But um, he's the first, like he's a believer of our methodology because, He's one of the individuals that essentially uh, was put through that path. And after Apple, you know, it's sort of like it was meant to be. It's crazy how all of the experiences had in, in the organizations that he's been at has led to the buildup of Made Boss, his background in, in mobile advertising, his background uh, even now in his like last uh, career with, with Apple in uh, data cura- uh, video cura- curation, data curation, and saying like, wow, it's such a natural fit that, you know, he used to match video content to users and now he's matching uh, internal growth um, jobs, opportunities to employees. Um, so that's sort of like how this happened. And, you know, throughout my journey, I kept telling people, advisors, um, I have my guy, like I have somebody that's going to join me and um, nobody knew who this person was, and and this person did not even know it himself. <laughs> but it was it wasn't time, and so when when it was time, then I aggressively, you know, kept pursuing and inviting him to my boss. Wow. Well, you you sound like a person who knows what you want and and goes after it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so knowing how difficult things would be for you as a female, as a Latinx owner of a business, and knowing that you didn't have the, the pedigree that a lot of um, venture capitalists would look for, did that discourage you at all as you started to think about, you know, building and, and putting together this business, assuming that you anticipated that at some point you would need to fundraise for this company? So it sounds like it didn't discourage you, but just <laughs> want to get your perspective <laughs> on that. I think, you know, we all have our moments. You know, there are days that I'm like, this is, you know, BS, like this is so unfair. And I have my little moments and, and I get angry and it's important to get angry because that really is sort of a, a fuel to, to keep going at it passionately. But I'm also, I think this persistence or whatever you call it, it's, it's also because I believe that the world, like we haven't given the world an opportunity and the world is meaning like just people in general to do things different. And it's not that I'm not, you know, I'm making excuses for people who haven't invested in people like me. Mm-hmm. It's just that I think we've been, we arrived to the party way later in the game um, with resources and with access and social capital. And I mean that in, in I don't want to blame individual people in the process. Mm-hmm. Um, Latinx, if we're not, you know, jumping in or um, not having enough, you know, working capital or not having enough social capital to support each other and doing that. I think for me is uh, I've always just focused on today's the day to make a difference. I'm someone that I like, can make a difference. I have what it takes. I'm willing to work hard. Oh my God, I getting I got choked up. Yeah. Um, because even though I'm not the smartest in the room, like I freaking work hard, yeah. and that's something that is recognized and that is valued and that people get pumped about and every single individual that I've been a manager of like they love working in my teams and that's because we do it with heart and we support each other and in, in, in being there and I think that the new face of leadership is that person is someone who enjoys and has fun and is able to develop people and and support them and and not necessarily you know, have this one-sided approach where one wins and the other one doesn't. And that's the type of company I'm building. And so I think new mod, like new modern leadership, the millennial uh, population is going to start, it, it's going to see the change is going to happen. And it's only, it's only time, um, you know, with time, I think essentially we're going to have more people like me, um, 70% of the min- minority population um, are Lat- Latinx. And I think, I think it's important to recognize that the majority, sorry, we're becoming 50%, but the majority 70, upwards of 70% is, is mix, of Mexican descent. Mm-hmm. And we don't have that representation, even within the Latinx community to, to say like, oh, Latin, Latinx 
Mexicanos or of Mexican descent have made it and have actually positioned themselves in in a an influential way in the U.S. And I I remember like just growing up seeing Latinas but not necessarily Mexicanas or of Mexican descent that had um, uh, power and and influence in business or in entrepreneurship and and I just decided that I didn't want other uh, other girls with big dreams hmm. not see themselves represented and so I'm gonna do whatever it takes. Yeah, well, thank you for that. I mean, you mm -hmm. just your passion just really exudes and I can feel the strength of, of your motivation and your your heart um, that you're, you're putting into it. And so I'm so inspired by your story and and, and uh -huh. everything that you're doing. Yeah. So I understand that you now have a campaign listed on the Republic site. So what led you to pursue crowdfunding as a means of securing funds for your business? And how is that going? So actually, we raised um, last June. And, you know, it's incredibly like empowering to feel the support of people that I had, I had not seen for a long time, like uh, high school friends invested, um, elementary friends invested, people in Mexico that <laughs> knew me growing up invested. And um, when I first heard of, of equity crowdfunding, I immediately fell in love with the idea of di uh, diversifying and empowering diversifying investment and empowering people to be part of of you know big ideas and i knew again that less than one percent of investments here in silicon valley go to latinos or latinx and way less than that to latinas mm -hmm. and knowing that you know nothing led me to believe that i would be like the the one <laughs> um <laughs> Per, you know, whatever present that they're going to say like, oh, here's Marta, let's give her some money. Right. Um, that it was going to be a difficult journey and that essentially I needed to do things differently to raise capital. So equity crowdfunding was perfect for me in that one, it allowed me to engage my community in, in this big dream and bring hope um, with you know through my postings and like everything that's happening and and I I keep everybody informed of new um, meetings or like uh, you know whatever happens with me boss like I keep everybody engaged. The other thing too is uh, just proving ideas that I my ideas really out of the box is quote unquote revolutionary. It takes uh, this and um, like this empowerment from from the manager and the employer to the employee mm -hmm. and going in to people that think traditionally, they're going to want that idea to be modeled in the way that they've seen it done. Right. And so I'm like, if I go in early with investors that either have a board seat or have a strong opinion um, in, in terms of like their advice to the very foundation of made boss, then it's going to be, their model and their idea and not what I'm thinking made boss should be. So to protect the integrity of the tool and essentially like what I know is the solution, I decided to not bring very heavy investors, you know, early on and to really focus on um, building the product. And so I didn't, I didn't have people even in my family that could give me 10, 15,000 um, so that I, you know, just the family and friends was, not possible for me, but I did have 200 people that could invest $50. Mm -hmm. And so we raised almost 90,000 this last June. And the majority, I think said was about 77% were Latin X and the majority of that were Latin NAS. Um, so that was really exciting for me. Um, and there were first time investors, uh, about 99% of them. And this, this time around, I'm seeing a very similar pattern. We're at 30,000 now. Wow, that's wonderful. Well, I'm so glad to hear about your success with that. I think crowdfunding is definitely democratizing access to funding for, for many entrepreneurs. And it seems like you are benefiting from that as well. So other than funding, what has been some of the biggest challenges that you've faced with getting your business off the ground? I think I don't even see... Uh, funding as a challenge, like as one of the bigger challenges, because again, like preparing for this journey um, is something that I just, it's kind of like I accepted that. And then how sad is that, right? Like I've accepted <laughs> that that was going to be it was sort of like the challenge and, and no longer like seeing it as a challenge. It is like the way 
it is. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the, the other thing that has been really surprising for me is really the the response um, of some people when I go in and I I present myself as you know made boss CEO and founder. And once they see the product, like at first, the challenge is is getting the appointment, um, and then the the way the way in which people start meetings with us, like oh, I don't really have a lot of leverage here, just you know letting you know right now. Um, but I really wanted to give you an opportunity to uh, to show us what my May boss is. And then once they see it towards the end, they're like, okay, and, and you know, I'm gonna send an email to the CEO. I'm gonna connect you with, you know, VP of HR and and then, you know, like ready to make that introduction. And it's sort of like it's disheartening that at even at the very beginning with people that we know in our network, that they have to say those things because they they probably feel like our product is not something mm. that's going to be valuable. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, their assumptions like that they're that's, the preconceived assumptions yeah, that they're yeah, holding. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. So there's this assumption that is like not going to be valuable. And then it turns out to be like something amazing that they want as part, you know, implemented in their organizations. And so I think the challenge there has been just the very assumption that this, this is not something that I have a lot of leverage with. I mean, I as a person that, you know, could make the introduction and later finding that they did have this leverage, but they started with that. And so, yeah. And the, and the model that you have is disruptive. I mean, your customers are not the group of people that a traditional VC or large company would think to focus on as, as a target. But obviously, they're a major audience and a major group that needs a lot of support. And so. I think that's one of the problems with traditional VC is that because, you know, there's not a lot of support for female and minority and Latinx founders, they're not accessing the customer base of more kind of diverse customers in this country and all of these ideas that would not typically be what a t traditional VC would want to represent or support because it's, it's unique yeah. and, it's, and it's, it doesn't follow kind of the mainstream model. So... Yeah, I think it's I think it's amazing, you know, what you're doing and how you're able to kind of navigate and circumvent some of those processes and the structural barriers that are in place that typically prevent people like you from getting access to funding and support. Totally. So, you know, the other thing that's really uh, interesting, um, now that I, I have Juventino, like we have fun together, like we go into meetings and then we, you know, we're able to like bounce off each other. but Every time we come out of a meeting that went really, really well, I think of myself and I'm like, when I was by myself, if I would have had this meeting and then I go and tell my friends or just people in general, like, oh, this happened, they'll be like, oh my God, is she like crazy in the head? Because it's too good to be true, even in the way we experience meetings with large organizations. But I'm like, but now you're here listening to this. So, you know, it's like, he's like, I know, this is like freaking awesome. It's so exciting. But what we've experienced together too is when, when I get the, the look like you came, like, how did you come up with this idea kind mm -hmm. of thing, you know, and even like verbally asking me that question. And now to Juventino, you built this? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, it's crazy. Like others don't get that question. Yeah. And, and we walk out of there like fudge. It's, it's, you know, we support each other. It's like, it's okay. It's okay. We're m more like us, you know, and, and, it's going to become a norm that more people like us are going to build big things like this. And so, uh, yeah, you're completely right. And, and it all comes down to the very first like impression and, that they have about us and our product. So, so what's been the response from the employer so far? Obviously, with the, with the kind of platform that you're building, I would imagine you'd need to you know, do a lot of outreach to the employers to identify the opportunities that your customers could go into once they've modeled out their career path. So how, how does that process work and, and how, you know, what kind of response are you getting from, from that side? I think that because of all of the work I've, I, I did building this um, momentum, right, for Made Boss and really being um, supporting people and getting jobs, supporting people and being promoted, I've developed a network of, of influencers internally in organizations that have uh, made amazing introductions. And so I think that we have, we have been lucky in the sense that we did our homework to be in a position where 
we don't have to beg people to give us an appointment. In fact, like the day we released the product, that next day we had already demo scheduled and we've get in, and we've demoed, you know, to companies like Uber and Walmart Foundation and Flagship and um, working on a demo with Yelp and uh, Airbnb. Um, so these are really big organizations that it takes a lot to get an actual appointment with one of their vice presidents and oh, the National Grocers Association CEO. And I think that having that network and the fact that I had sales background, um, mm-hmm. that was one of my first jobs that I've developed this way of sharing that Mayboss exists, um, that people essentially want to see it. And so it's it's going great. We've met with amazing Fortune 100 companies, Fortune 500 companies, and we're still in talks with them. Usually the sales cycle for organizations of that size takes about three to six months. But again, the fact that we're in conversations and that they keep bringing us back to do now a presentation with HR and with procurement, like that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. The other thing in terms of um, building momentum with clients is that we found that at first, uh, bigger enterprises were most excited about our product. And then we started testing, you know, what would it look like for smaller enterprises? Um, because they really do drive our economy and that's where most people are employed. And so we started looking at different models, even in our subscription and, and pricing model. And so now we're at a point where we're starting a relationship with a very small business and then uh, implementing Made Boss. And so now we're going to have data that not only shows like, you know, from a very small enterprise to uh, once we're, you know, close an actual contract with one of the bigger ones, and be able to show um, uh, user response um, in both settings. And then, so what's your pitch to the employers? How do you, how do you convince them to come on board? It's a little different than it is, you know, for investors. And essentially what, what we start, um, or even how we start telling the story is, is because they already know the problem. um, But we sort of, you know, formulate it in a way that, um, that resonates. So, we share, as you know, like there's 50, 50% of employees are leaving because they lack career pathing and engagement. And we talk about the traditional employer driven model not working. We show um, that it's reliant on relationships and it could be biased and efficient and it leads to employee dissatisfaction. Mm-hmm. And then we tell them Made Boss democratizes that opportunity. And through the employer driven model pathing, we drive data based decisions. And I think the when we say data-based decisions, it's, it really clicks and they want to see it. Okay. And then how does the product actually make money? What is the business model? It's a year subscription model, uh, an annual based. And we have three tiers. We have like a basic and we go all the way to premium based on the different functionalities of Boss. And so that one year premium gets, uh, or one year um, annual fee gets paid. And then there's additional fee per employee using the app. Okay. And then what's your vision for the product going forward? What do you, where do you see the product going or the company going over the next few years? Yeah, we want to, you know, we, we have really big dreams. I mean, we have this um, AI uh, driven um, uh, uh, momentum and we also want to make sure that we address a global problem and not just in, in service and retail and uh, high turnover industries, but really anywhere and everywhere. And uh, we want to become the ecosystem uh, where people know exactly what it is that they could do and how to get there. And right now, um, if, it, if it isn't because you have to do your own research and like find people that could tell you what you could be or managers that could inspire you, um, there's really very little way for you to find that. Um, and I think that we can actually drive accessibility to to where you could be uh, quickly. Wonderful. Well, lastly, what advice would you give to other female and or Latinx founders that are looking to follow in your footsteps and take the leap into starting their own business or scaling an existing business? Like what are what are the things that you would recommend that they start doing to improve their chances of success? Number one, have faith. Mm-hmm. A lot of faith that good things can happen to you and that you are well deserving of that. 
I think that's one thing that I uh, see lacking um, just in general. And it's important that that we believe that in our core. This country has uh, has been great to our, and I'm gonna just gonna sort of like put it out there. It's mm-hmm. been great to um, to our community in many ways, but it hasn't in others. And I think entrepreneurship and and this journey is is a testament to what it has not been great at. Yeah. Um, and I think that one knowing that um, it's really no fault of our own, and that we've been put in a situation that sort of creates an unequitable start line that recognizing that not necessarily blaming it, but just recognizing that is, um, is important to not give up because it's hard. And there are many days that you're going to feel like, you know, you, you probably are dreaming too big and, and that, you know, it's, it's scary that maybe you're going to fail and, that's okay to think. Um, and I've, you know, the first time I had that thought, I was like, oh my God, maybe I'm not meant for this because I'm having this thought. And then I spoke with other entrepreneurs who have actually raised series A, series B. And they said, like, they said those things like, yeah, you know, I, I'm in the shower and sometimes I have this little moment of fear, like, oh, what if? And so I, I then recognized that as a normal entrepreneurial thought. What if I fail? And at that moment, I, I really, I, I gave myself the opportunity to have little moments like that because it's sort of, it's having compassion for myself that I'm doing this. Um, at first I was doing it, you know, sort of by myself. And now that I have a partner in crime and then we have a group of advisors that really believe and, and now investors that believe, uh, it hasn't been something that happened from one day to the next. And so it requires a lot of faith that it can be something amazing and that you are deserving of it. Yeah, there are a lot of barriers for female and minority uh, entrepreneurs. I mean, even those with the right pedigree or that live in the right location in Silicon Valley or in New York, you know, still have a lot of challenges getting funding, getting support, getting their businesses off the ground. I want to just um, comment on something you just said right now about uh, entrepreneurs having the right pedigree. I think we've been conditioned to think that, right, that there is the right pedigree. It's like matching people to jobs. You have to have the right skills. And there's a transparency gap on what it means to have the right skills just as it is to have the right pedigree to be an entrepreneur. And I think that just like it is when matching you into a job, uh, it's potential and it's behavior rather than actual um, attainment. And the same with entrepreneurship, that it's going to, we're, we're going to start to see a shift on um, what it's defined as the right pedigree, because the behavior of an entrepreneur is going to become more important than, you know, where they come from. And I think that's something that's really exciting for us, um, for the Latinx community. And we need to continue to push through and in re- redefining what that means, because we're all deserving of amazing opportunity in entrepreneurship. And we have to really support each other's journey um, as much as we can so that we can make it there together. Yeah. And I I totally agree. I share your optimism and I definitely look forward to that day when, um, you know, (laughs) what, what you're saying is true, that everyone really has equal opportunity to make these kind of dreams come true. So thank you again for your time. It's been really wonderful talking to you. I loved hearing your story. You're just such an inspiration and a model for hard work and dedication and and what, you know, having heart can really do and and how a business can really kind of be formed from from nothing and just from an idea to something that's really transforming lives. So again, thank you for your time. And I Look forward to hearing, you know, all of the wonderful things that that you guys will achieve um, in the future. Awesome. Thank you. And good luck with um, this journey in in the podcast. Thank you so much. (laughs) Sounds exciting. For all of you out there listening, thank you so much for joining me. You can find the links to everything we talked about today in my show notes at goodbyteventures.com. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please reach out to me on Twitter at techforwardpod.com 
or on Instagram at Tech Forward Podcast. Remember, you can also connect with me by signing up for my newsletter at goodbyteventures.com slash tech dash forward dash podcast. That's bite with a Y. If you enjoy the Tech Forward Podcast, please share a link with your friends over on the social media channels where you're most active. Also, please do consider writing a review of the show on iTunes or wherever you subscribe to the show. Reviews and social shares are one of the best ways for new listeners to find us. Thank you again for listening.